What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Vince McMahon finally responds. WWE fans turn on Becky Lynch, which we've seen for the past couple of days, and other wrestling related news. Should be a very interesting one. Let's see what old man Vince has to say, what he's been up to. Granted, I don't think a lot of us care, but you know, we'll see what's going on with old man Vince. Appreciate all the love and support guys shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. Going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Vince McMahon responds to the lawsuit, a new champion crowned, has the WWE Universe turned on Becky Lynch, mm. Jey Uso explains why the Mania match tanked, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at Vince McMahon responds to the lawsuit. Right. The top of today's news is Vince McMahon's official legal response to Janelle Grant's lawsuit and the allegations against him. WrestleNomics' Brandon Thurston is reporting, Vince McMahon has filed a motion to compel arbitration in the Grant vs. WWE at all case. As expected, McMahon's defense is that the NDA he and Janelle Grant agreed to contains an arbitration clause and therefore this dispute should go to private arbitration. McMahon says that Grant's outrageous claims of sexual abuse and coercion are pure fiction, plainly intended to garner publicity and are flatly contradicted by plaintiff's own contemporary statements. He says he and Grant engaged in a consensual relationship during which the defendant never coerced the plaintiff into doing anything and never mistreated her in any way. As we noted in past videos on the lawsuit filed by Grant against McMahon, there are serious allegations being yeah. made. The lawsuit is looking to void the non-disclosure agreement based on the argument that McMahon's alleged behavior rose to the level where an NDA agreement is not binding. It appears that McMahon wants to avoid any publicity from a public trial, hence his desire to take the case to arbitration. McMahon also may feel that the arbitration is a means of resolving the case in his favor as opposed to going to trial. Mm -hmm. Thurston also revealed that one of McMahon's arguments disputing one of Grant's allegations. In the motion, McMahon denies that Grant was grieving from the loss of appearance at the time McMahon and Grant met in 2019. McMahon says that Grant's father passed in 2017 and her mother passed away some time earlier. McMahon references a lawsuit related to the foreclosure of Grant's parents' home filed with the New York State Supreme Court. Janelle mm. Grant's lawsuit commented on McMahon's assertion that Grant was not grieving. Vince McMahon has never known a storyline that he doesn't twist to fit his own shameful narrative. Her father was in a home hospice during her final days where Janelle continued to care for him around the clock. Prior to his death, she'd been caring for her blind, wheelchair-bound mother. Using the grief of someone who lost both of her parents is an all-new level of disgusting. Whether or not this case goes to arbitration mm. remains to be seen. However, unless both sides agree to arbitration, which seems unlikely based on the aggressive mm -hmm. stance Janelle Grant's attorney is taking, it will resolve some sort of court proceeding to determine whether McMahon's alleged misconduct voided the NDA. It should also go without saying that both parties' legal counsels are working aggressively to protect what they see as their client's best interests. Unfortunately, this is likely to see more instances where one or more of both sides try to throw the case into the court of public opinion. Yep. Next up, a new... Yep. It's going to get ugly before it get better. So, basically, Vince McMahon is kind of trying to refute all those things that she said and making it seem as if, well, she agreed to all of this and she was okay with all of this. So, and I, I think ultimately, it's, it comes down to that NDA. He didn't, uh, reportedly by her, uh, her team, um, he didn't finish paying out the NDA. That's what it really comes down to. That's that's how, you know. So some could say, oh, well, she's only bringing this out because, you know, she didn't pay out the Indy. He didn't pay out the full amount of the NDA, like um, for her agreeing to sign that he was going to pay her off. He didn't finish paying her off. So that's the only reason why it's about money, which some could, you know, make that point. But at the same time. Some can also make that point if she did go through these heinous things that Vince McMahon wanted to do, she should get compensated if he say he's going to compensate. If he wants you to sign this NDA, I'm going to compensate you to stay quiet. Don't get it twisted. You think Vince McMahon hadn't issued out multiple NDAs to multiple individuals to keep them quiet? He has a lot of money, y'all. And not to say every person with money has evil intentions, but... 
there's been rumors and stuff that's been going around about Vince for a very long time. Very long time. So, I don't know. This is still, you know, up in the air. But, you know, it seems like they're going to be throwing <laughs> throwing trash at each other for a while until this gets settled out, you know, when it comes to, like, their, their representatives for each party here. So, I don't know. Y'all let me know. How do y'all feel about it? Do y'all still, do y'all believe Vince and his team? Or are y'all still in the, the camp of Janelle Grant probably... There's a, probably a lot of truth to what she's saying. Let me know which side of the fence y'all y'all are on, man. This is very interesting. NXT champion crowned. NXT is a new champion following night one of spring breaking. Trick Williams battle NXT champion Ilya Dragunov. Love it. Stipulation where Trick would have to leave NXT had he lost. Williams beat him, furthering fans believing that Dragunov will be drafted to the main roster yes. when the WWE draft begins this week. And this is great news for Williams, who has yes. only been on NXT TV for about three years. Shawn Michaels commented on how important Williams' win is. I hope tonight was some sort of little insight into what we do here in NXT, yes. the developmental system. I think when you see somebody like Trick Williams and quite honestly so many of the young athletes that we get in here in NXT, but Trick is just the prime example of someone that comes from the Philadelphia Eagles, not quite making it into football and then dedicating himself to becoming a WWE superstar and committing himself like he's done day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. And it's only been two of them and you can see the pinnacle at where he's risen to. Williams carried on the tradition of many wrestlers who began the NFL aspirations only to try their hand at pro wrestling. How far he goes in his career remains to be seen, but Michaels yeah. praised the work that has been done on NXT and how Trick Williams exemplifies NXT's mission statement. I speak not eloquently, obviously, but I just can't stress enough the system that we have down here. The coaches, the skull sessions, the training, even the recruiting. Next up has the WWE. That's awesome, man. Trick. He did it, man. I'm happy. I'm happy Trick got his moment. He deserves it. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does as an NXT champion. And eventually he's going to get called up soon too. I can't wait to see it. Ilya Dragunov, fantastic. Can't wait to see him on the main roster. I know a lot of people are saying maybe he gets uh, um, recruited into Imperium. I don't think that should happen, obviously, because of the history between Dragunov and Gunther themselves. So I do think they're going to cross paths and it's going to be fantastic. Hey, man. Dragging off, he's done his thing in NXT. He's elevated that title, put on some fantastic matches. The dude is brutal in the ring. Hopefully, the main roster fans can really get behind him and he be something that they actually, uh, you know, gravitate to, like they did with Gunther. Hopefully, they can do it with Dragon Off. Man, either way, Trick Williams got the job done. Love to see it, man. WWE Universe turned on Becky Lynch. Now, if you consider YouTube video likes to be a good measuring stick, the fans aren't happy with Becky Lynch. And Wrestling I News is reporting that the like to dislike ratio on Lynch's title win and her comments about it have been negative as the match currently sits at 22,000 likes while it has 33,000 dislikes. Her interview has 6,200 likes while having 8,800 dislikes. Now they seem to think that the reason for the dislikes is some fans believe that Liv Morgan should have won the belt since Liv is now a heel and Morgan's backstage attack on Rhea Ripley, which accidentally injured the Eradicator, was used to write Ripley off television. Now there's some merit to this as the idea of Ripley coming back from injury and not only looking for revenge, but looking to get a title back. Nevertheless, Morgan fans shouldn't give up hope as Rhea Ripley is going to be out for a bit, but just how long is uncertain mm -hmm. and there's still time to put the belt on Liv. There may be other factors at play that motivate Becky's win, including the WWE attempting to woo her into signing a new deal with the company, mm -hmm. and the WWE wanting to keep fans guessing. Not to mention building Liv's heel turn even further, potentially setting things up for a match against Becky at Backlash France. It's also worth noting that the dislikes on the YouTube video shouldn't be taken as an overwhelming proof that the universe is getting tired of Becky. She continues to get great crowd reactions that shows that the dislikes may be just a case of a vocal minority expressing themselves. Is the universe turning on Becky Lynch? Let us know in the comments down below. As I've seen a lot of people on social media, definitely. I made a video about it. Like, there's a lot of people that just, they're comparing her to Hulk Hogan, which is like, come on, guys, relax. Stop. Stop that. Liv will get her moment. I am still one of those people that I would have loved for Liv to potentially have won this, but I think they may go a different route with having Liv actually beat Becky, which actually works, too, if they do that. And if they can push Liv's heel character, they still have time to make this work. So maybe she... I, I personally didn't think 
that they would have uh, Becky as a transis- transitional champion, but that may be the case. We'll see. It lives going to have her moment, you know, in the sun, guys. Just relax. Relax. It's going to happen. <laughs> That's all I can say, man. Next up, Jey Uso explains why the Mania match tanked. Now, fans are still trying to figure out why the highly anticipated brother versus brother match between Jay and Jimmy Uso at WrestleMania fell far short of their expectations. Yeah. Our main event, Jay's weighing in on why the match didn't live up to the hype. He appeared on the Gorilla Position show, noting, I just said this to someone. I kind of felt like we did let the people down. Really? You feel that? Yeah, man, because I wanted to go out there and have a straight up banger too. I wanted to do the wrestling part, but let alone make sure the emotion part is there. It was just a time issue. You know what I'm saying? Jay's famous mm. father, Rikishi, shared the same opinion, but believing that had the match gone longer, the twins could have turned it into a mania match for the ages. However, Jay seems to understand the position he and Jimmy were put in. You just got to play your position on the team. That's what happened. I'm still happy though. I still got a singles match at WrestleMania with my brother. That's a big picture. So I'm always have me and him face off at WrestleMania. I'm a frame a picture that always it's marked off our box. I just wish we could have went the way I know we can. But as for whether other matches running long cut into their time, Jay explained, is that something that happens on the night? Like, do you find out just before your time is cut? Oh yeah, they went over this many minutes. Sorry, sorry, you know, it's all good, you know, just go out there and handle business. Mm. The timing problem is a common factor in WWE. WrestleMania 30's first night was a mistimed mess with far too much filler. A review of night one's first hour shows that the first match started late and there was a noticeable delay between the first and second match. Do you think the match would have been better had it been given more time? Let us know in the comments down below. I actually want to check that video out. I actually plan on checking that video out of him, uh, you know, talking about uh, what went wrong in that match so i definitely will check that out for sure because i'm sure he probably went into greater detail but it felt like it was rushed it did if you watch that match it felt like the ending just came out of nowhere after jimmy was pleading like don't do this man i'm sorry bro the ending was right few it wasn't even like a minute or two left and then they went to the ending and then that was it that was it you can tell they didn't have enough time. I was like, uh, if they probably would have had a lot more time to build the crescendo up, because I feel like they had to, they rushed to the the whole Jimmy pleading with Jay part. They got to that very quickly in the match because the match wasn't that long. I think that's something you build up right at the end. I think that was supposed to, I do think that was the ending of the match, a sign that the match is about to end when Jimmy's trying to plead to his brother but they didn't get to that point where well, they got to it a little bit too soon. So uh, it definitely makes sense why they probably didn't have enough time. They didn't. Um, some stuff probably went over and they didn't have enough time. Unfortunately, it hindered the match. Um, but I do think it would have probably been a, a bit better, maybe even a whole lot better if you gave them 20, you know what I'm saying, maybe 25 minutes to really build the crescendo. And to be honest with you, even with that, it's still the buildup for this match wasn't as good as it should have been. They should have been building this up since since Jimmy and Jay were number one and number two at this year's Royal Rumble. That's when they should have been building it up. Right there. And they didn't. You could have had Jimmy eliminate Jay in the Royal Rumble. That would have been perfect. Fantastic. You could have had situations where at every turn, they didn't start doing that till right before uh wrestlemania every turn jimmy's screwing over jay every chance he gets he's screwing him over we didn't get that to right before the show happened so i don't know could have been a multitude of factors but i do think time constraints definitely hurt them next up a wwe personality's new job but wondering what robert stone is doing on the black and gold brand now that von wagner has been released well, Fightful Select is reporting that Stone is now producing matches on NXT. According oh. to the story, Stone produced the match between Fallon Henley and Jade Parker with the help from Matt Bloom. The report notes that Stone is the latest talent to try his hand at producing following work by Sean Spears and Pete Dunne. It's currently believed that Stone won't be working with any NXT superstars on screen following the release of Von Wagner. And finally, Damn. more Def Rebel wretchedness. <laughs> Last but not least, the WWE's theme music team Def Rebel continue to be in the news and for one reason only, the universe's dissatisfaction with their yeah. product. 
And now a new report from Corey Brennan suggests Randy Orton wasn't a fan when the WWE gave Death Rubble the job to redo the Vipers theme. According to Brennan, the only thing I can confirm now is that when Randy Orton returned, they considered a change in his theme music. At the time, I couldn't find out who produced it, but it was supposed to be a Death Rebel produced remix of Voices. Brennan said that he's still investigating the story, but shared this information. Randy was not having that theme. It was Randy, Triple H and Michael Hayes. And within 10 minutes, we'll be played through in the arena. One of my sources went, yeah, that's not being used. Death Rebel continues to produce entrance themes that fans just aren't into. No. But thankfully, it appears that Randy Orton saved the fans from having to endure another lousy song. But there you have it, folks. The wildest Bro, news. If they would have produced fucking Randy Orton's theme and remixed it to make it horrible. Oh, my. Get rid of them. <laughs> uh, nah, bro. The themes are so fucking generic. It, it doesn't... Themes are supposed to excite the fans. As soon as they hear your music, they're supposed to... Oh, we're excited. Oh, we're, we're, we're lively. Oh, you're supposed to get that, that rush, that pop. Oh, you know, we know who's about to come out now. When you hear people's theme music now at times, nowadays... You can be excited about the wrestler, but when you hear the theme, you're like, it doesn't immediately catch you. You got to see the wrestler for it to catch you. And then you kind of somewhat get excited. It shouldn't be like that, that way. Once you hear the music, instant. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready. Then you see the wrestler. Oh, let's turn up even more. Now it's music. Uh, and then you see the wrestler. Oh, okay. You want to know what works with Cody as well? His music. His theme music, it works. People can sing along with the same thing with Seth Rollins. When they hear his music, it works. They sing along. Hell, even with Roman Reigns, once he changed it and it had that that final boss type, the the you know the final villain, the ultimate villain in like some fantasy game, and there's no you know like lyrics to it. It's just the presence of it. Like people already standing up as it as it you know the music crescendos up. Like people already excited. Oh, we about to see the guy in WWE. It's very interesting, man. How they kind of fall and falling by the wayside with their music production because that's a very big important part of a wrestling's character. But comment down below. Let me know how y'all feel about the the wrestling news, the stories that we found out today. And I definitely want to get y'all opinion on what y'all feel. Uh, is going on with the, the Vince McMahon uh, lawsuit allegations. Do y'all agree with Vince? Do y'all feel like Janelle is out here just making stuff up? Or do y'all still side with Janelle in this situation? And Vince is, uh, you know, he, you know, he crossed the line uh, several times. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about this whole Vince McMahon situation. I appreciate all love, support, Road to 150K, and I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.